Hello, I'm going to show you how to complete this exercise in this video, exercise three, the CSS positioning exercise. So um, let me just step through the instructions and then uh, we'll go through on how to do it. So create a page, um, exercise three dot HTML along with an associated style sheet that has a wireframe like the one shown in figure one with a fixed header. So figure one looks something like that, okay? And each div should have a border and a different color. One div should have a background picture on it. Add text or images in the foreground of each div. Um, one div should have a single line of text centered in it. Uh, two div elements should have content that overflows and demonstrate two ways of dealing with overflow and uh, make the page responsive so that at medium resolution the page looks like figure two like that and at low resolution for mobile views it looks like this they all just stack all right so so let's get started um got my blank page here we're going to start with the html shell so we want to include a linked style sheet and we also want to include the viewport meta tag because we want it to be um, responsive. So I'm just going to take this, copy it, paste it here. I'm going to save it, uh, save it to my desktop, and I'm going to make a new folder and call that demo, and I'm going to call this exercise3.html. All right, so, and maybe I'll title this demo. All right, so now I'm going to make my, my CSS page. It's a new file. And I'm just going to name it stylesheet.css. Okay, so Baz. All right. And let's start start building. So, all right, we've got got our all our metadata in header tags. And then in our body tags is everything that you're going to see on the screen. So, so we're going to start with a fixed header. So I'm going to make a class called header. And actually, you can use the header tag here if you want as well. Um, so right here. Header, and we're going to make that position fixed. We're going to, we're going to give it, uh, I guess we'll position it right at the top and the left. And we'll give it a width of 100%. And let's give it some height. Let's do 150 pixels. All right, so we've got our header now. Um, let's look here for reference. So now we're going to have our next four. So what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, flex boxes. So I'm going to make a box that contains all of these. So I'm going to call this class flex box. Okay, and inside that big box, I'm going to put all my other things. So these four, notice that as I change the screen size, the top four behave differently than the bottom three. So I'm going to have the top four have one class, and then the bottom three will have another class. So. Um, I'm going to call these inner flex. I'll call the top ones inner flex one. 
and you know I'm just gonna copy and paste okay those are gonna be my top four and inside the same flex box I can go ahead and put the other three guys the bottom three so I'm gonna call them I'm gonna call them inner flex too and again we're just gonna repeat okay so now let's go to our style sheet and set up some rules for these classes so our flex box okay we want that outer container holding everything let's give it a width of 100 percent and um because we want it to to cover the whole screen we want the display to be flex we're going to justify the content um, we're going to use space around and that gives equal space around each element and um, and we want we want to set the flex wrap property to wrap because we want we want the elements to stack as the screen size changes so so this is important okay so now let's style up the inner inner flexes so inner flex one Okay, they're all going to have a border. Um, so for inner flex one, for the default view, we want them to be 20%. Well, we want four of them to fit in a single row. We want four of them to fit in a single row. So we're going to make each of the width of each of these individual boxes about 20%. Um, and you can play around with it, but basically I'm just saying pick a percentage such that four of them all fit in a single row, right? So it has to add up to less than 100. Um, okay, they have some width, they have a border. We're going to give them a height and let's say 200 pixels. Okay, now for the the lower three, the flex two, same thing, they should all have a border. Um, so this time we only want three of them to fit in a row. So maybe we'll make this width 30%. Okay. And these ones are a little bit shorter, so maybe we'll make the height uh, 120 or 130 pixels and save that. Now, let's have a look at this. Make sure everything's, I don't have any typos. All right, there we go. Um, looks like my header is missing. Um, Border solid. Position fixed. Where it is. Oh, it's underneath the other guys. So, so what I need to do here is I need to give this. I need to add a little bit of space here. So on the flex box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a margin top. And we'll do 200 pixels so that it clears the header. There we go. So now you can see the header. All right. So I think we need a little bit of space on each of these as well. So I'm going to add. I'm going to add a margin top. 
maybe 20 pixels. So this, okay. And maybe I'll add, well, I'll add that later. So, so here we go. So, so far so good are, um, we've got the layout in figure one. Okay, I'm going to go back and color them later. I just want to get the layout first. Um, so we've got the layout. Oops. We've got the layout and you can see that because I used percentages on the width, it's already quite, um, it's already responsive, but you'll see that it, it gets awkward as the screen size gets smaller. So we want them to start stacking. Now for them to start stacking, we're going to use the at media command. Okay. So for medium screens, we'll do this figure right here. So media. So this says, let's do 900. Okay. So, so basically this says, um, check the size of the screen. If the screen size is 900 or less, then um, then do everything that's inside these brackets. Okay, so so what we want to do when we go from the large default screen to the medium screen, we want um, we want the top four to stack with two in a row, and then we want the bottom ones to stack single with one in each row. Okay, so. So what we're going to do, Merflex 1. Okay, so right here in our Flex 1, so what, what makes it such that 4 fit in a row is the width, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the width such that only two of them can fit in a row. So I'm making that width 40%. And so doing this combined with flex wrap will make it so that they start stacking. Okay. For inner flex two, same idea, except I want so you can see in figure two, I only want one of them to fit on each um, on each row. So maybe I'll make that width 70%. Okay. I'll save that and uh, I've got to refresh the page. And you can see that once I get to 900, I've got these guys start stacking. Now, I, I think I want to add a little margin here because these ones stack right on top of one another. So I'm going to add on the inner flex one, I'm going to add an extra margin at the top, maybe 20 pixels again. Let's save that. And so they're spaced out a little more nicely there. All right, so that's our layout. And, uh, oh, wait, one more thing. I guess we have to do the mobile view. Okay, so it's, we're gonna do one more at media call. And we're gonna say, okay, now when the maximum width is 600 or less, we're going to, we're gonna stack them. So inner flex two is already stacked in single one one box per row. I'm gonna do inner flex one. Uh, we're gonna make the width of these guys. Oh, maybe we'll do eighty percent. Okay, so now let's do a refresh. So there's there's your figure two. And there's your figure one. All right.
so far so good. So now, now we're going to add some color. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to give them each individual IDs. So box one. And I'm just going to give them generic box one, box two, box three ID names. Okay. Box four. Same thing here. Um, six and seven. All right, so we'll save that. So now um, let's start adding some colors. So the header, we're going to make that background color, I don't know, I guess we'll do red. Okay, and now let's start, um, start writing up rules for each of our boxes. So box one, I'm just going to go ahead and okay, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven. All right, so we'll just have a different background color for each one. Um, maybe we'll make this one gray. Uh, let's make this one green. Blue. Okay, so I'm just kind of randomizing this. Um, just picking some simple ones. You can, of course, pick nicer colors. Um, this is going to be like a light blue. And then I'm just going to do a random combination of letters and numbers for this one and surprise myself. Again, I'm going to do that. All right. So let's have a look. Nice colorful page. Okay. Everything's still still good. All right. So let's go back to the assignment. Look at our checklist. So we got the page responsive with the right layouts. Um, each dev element has a border and a different background color. So one element should have a background picture on it. So um, I'm going to find a background picture. I like cats, so I'm going to do a Google image search for cats. Selection. I've got a selection of cat images here. I'm going to just go ahead and, and pick one. This guy. We're going to save the image. Make sure it's a JPEG image. Make sure it's the right format because sometimes they're um, unusual formats. So I'm going to call this cat.jpg. And also make sure that you're saving it to the same directory at least, oh, so I'm going to call this cat.jpg. So make sure you're saving it to the same directory where you have your code saved. Or maybe in a 
folder within that. But for now, we're just going to save it within the same folder. Okay, so, so I've got my image and I'm going to use box one. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, background image. Okay, and here I'm going to tell it where the background image is. And I've saved the background image in the same directory, so I can go ahead and just write the file name. Okay, so let's have a look at that. I'm going to close this. So there's my picture. So the image is, is much bigger than the size of the div. So I'll just uh, write in here this. All right, save that. All right, so this div has a background image. So it's for your reference. Okay, so, so now we want to play around with the size a little bit. So you can do whatever you want with the size. Um, so for example, if you just wanted to make the width fit exactly on, the, on your screen, on your div, you might just do background size 100%. Now, one of the, this is probably a remnant from the 90s, but one of the default settings, and I'll show you if I make this maybe small enough, narrow enough. So what happens is um, if it doesn't cover the full div, it automatically starts repeating. So if you don't want that tile look, you're going to use background repeat and do no repeat okay and so then you don't get that tiling as far as size um, you know you could do whatever you want with the size so if you want to fix size you can use pixels instead of percent and oh I gotta refresh this so no matter how I resize it just makes it that size right that looks at the width, um, and then you can do both width and height. So for example, if I did 100 by 200 pixels, it's going to stretch it out of proportion, but just to show you um, that you can control the size however you want. Um, the best size option is to use cover. Okay, because what that does is it takes the smallest dimension of the picture and it covers your div. And so that way you've always got your section covered. Okay, so now you might want to position the background picture. So you're going to use the background position. Okay, and I'm going to demonstrate this with a smaller size. So I'm going to do 100 pixels and just so that I can demo, you can see a little more clearly. Okay, so if I make it small and I center it, if I use background position center, it centers it. I can do top, right? bottom, uh, left, and right, etc. Okay. I'm going to go back to using cover for my background size because that just looks nicer. Okay, and so again, you can play around with how that, how that's positioned. I'm going to go ahead and center it. Okay, so we have our cat right in the middle. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to do is I'm going to make this text a little bit bigger, just so it's readable. So I'm going to put font size and make it 20 px. You can see it's a little bigger. 
maybe for box one, maybe I want that text to be lighter so it stands out. So we're going to do color, maybe I'll even just do white. Okay. And that changes the color of the border as well. Um, okay, so that's our background image. Okay, uh, the next instruction is say add text or images to the foreground of each div. Okay, we'll, we'll do that in time. One div element should have a single line of text centered in it. Okay, so, so we'll do this one, box two. Um, so this div has centered text. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to center it both horizontally and vertically. The easiest way to do this, so we'll we're going to do a text align center, and that's going to justify the text, and it's going to center it. I'm going to give you center justification. And, but the important thing, what's going to make this work, is to use, a, again, use, use the idea of flex containers. So if you turn on the display flex, justify content, center, but also align, so justify content is going to center things horizontally if you choose center, and align content um, aligns things along the vertical. So the default is to just align everything up at the top. You can also do align content center. And so, let me, This. Or items center. Sorry about that. Align items. Um, okay. So we've got the centered one. We've got the background. Now we want to talk about overflow. So. Let's get some overflowing text. I've got my Lorem Ipsen open. Generate some of that. Copy this first paragraph. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put some text in there, and then maybe put some overflowing text in this guy. And then I'm going to put some overflowing text here. So we want two, two divs that have overflows. Um, and we want all of them to have some text. So just write text. OK. So now let's, let's have a look. OK. So, so the default for overflow is, is visible. The default for overflow is that it's just going to show you, it's, it's going to let whatever happens, let all the text overflow. So I don't want that. Um, I want to show you different ways of dealing with overflow. So close box four. So if you want to have a scroll, you're just going to do overflow scroll. I'm going to save that and demo it. Okay, and so now now we've got a scroll there. Now notice that there's also a scroll along the Y, or sorry, along the X axis. And we don't really need that there because the text is already, it automatically wraps around to fit in your div. So if you just want to control, if you don't want the scroll bars to automatically show up in both directions, you can just pick a direction. So. I want the overflow to just show up in the Y direction. I'm going to do overflow dash Y. If I wanted it to just show up in the X direction, I would do overflow dash X. Okay, so refresh that and see how that scroll bar at the bottom disappears. And we just have that overflow. Okay, and, um, and this is a default for overflow. 
right? This is overflow visible. But if you, another way of dealing with overflow is to hide it. And so this, what this is going to do, it's just going to cut off the text. And this is actually okay if you want to do, um, so for example, when you want to give people a little preview of an upcoming page, sometimes you want to just have a little sample of the text coming and you want to cut it off so that compels them to click on it and go to your next page. Um, all right, so I think that's it. That fulfills all, all of the conditions. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Bye.